वेलकम बैक इंस्टाग्राम यूनिवर्सिटी और आई जी यू इज अ ग्लोबल सीरीज ऑफ इवेंट्स विच द सोशल मीडिया प्लेटफॉर्म ब्रॉड टू इंडिया वेर इन इंस्टाग्राम हाईलाइटेड द न्यू एंड द लेटेस्ट प्रोडक्ट फीचर्स फ्रॉम इंस्टाग्राम एज वेल एज शेयर एक्सपर्ट एडवाइस ऑन हाउ यू मेक बेस्ट यूज ऑफ द प्लेटफॉर्म द सेशन कवर्ड सम ऑफ इंस्टाग्राम वेरीड सर्विसेज फीड्स रील्स डी एम्स एक्सेट्रा द वे इट्स यूज इज इवॉल्विंग विद टाइम सम प्रो टिप्स ऑन फीचर्स एंड क्रिएटर्स परस्पेक्टिव on some trending topics to tell us more about this we are joined in by parash sharma director of content and community partnerships at meta who sharing insights on the creator economy the latest content trends on instagram and much more listen in parash welcome to cnbc tv 18 thank you very much uh parash we are meeting on the sidelines of uh, you know this initiative called instagram university if you can share with us what are the kind of initiatives that uh, instagram is doing for product education our aim through all of this is that how can we make this community which is a part of the creation ecosystem and also the community which educates more and more people to come and create there's a online or virtual sessions which go route through the year right through the year Uh, where we do one on one one to many webinar sessions training through multiple programs that we run then there are rl events rl events are of different nature like the one which we are talking about specifically there are rl events where we do collaborations and again during uh, those particular events when we do it we talk about features and things that people can come and do it so our aim is that how can we both educate and enable uh the largest cohort of both the experimenting as well as the established creator ecosystem to know how best to harness instagram and how best to utilize their creativity and creator economy is something that has been spoken about at length over the past couple of months if you can share with us what are some of the key things that we should know about creator economy yeah. from an instagram perspective two key things if you first look at from a from a demand side hmm India has a huge potential to further grow from how people are currently consuming content and how much they can more uh, uh, consume content. Just as a very simple example, currently 60% of the Indian internet population consumes video content. Yeah, it's a 800 odd million uh, number currently of the internet audience. That number in Indonesia is China is 70%, in US is 80%, and China is 90%. So there's a huge opportunity of growth in the demand side. Look at from supply side currently. between 8 to 12% of the internet enabled population is classified that could be creators like one report says 100 million creators mm. that number is 25% in china mm. so there is a huge opportunity from a supply side also to come in then if you look at the shape of the creator economy it's no longer a pyramid which is at the top it's kind of a burgeoning in the middle because we are seeing a large number of creators coming from a tier 2 tier 3 towns mm. that's extremely extremely big and interesting and opens up a completely new way to look at it mm. fourth dimension or the vector that you can look is the nature of content mm. it's no longer limited to what intuitively for people who are new in this ecosystem think of fashion entertainment dance there are sub genres there's fintech there is auto there is diy there is gardening mm. and within it there are multiple sub layers of it so more and more diverse content is created mm. and of course then india has the languages we have the beauty of the languages so there are creators coming from across different languages who may not have millions of followers but they have hundreds and thousands of followers but strong engagement mm. so these are multiple vectors and of course then there's a monetization part of it and then there is a we still need to be evangelize it more Mm. from the brands and marketing community to who have started to understand it uh, you know the government has been looking at creators and influencers uh, with more scrutiny first came in january came the guideline for influencers to disclose their paid content labels whether it's gifted whether it's free whether it's a freebie then came uh, you know the guideline for health influencers to declare their qualifications when they are you know putting up content related to spreading health awareness or some endorsing something and then uh, of course the fin fluence fin influencers fin influencers yeah. uh, came under the government radar uh, so how first of all uh, are these disclosures happening and uh, what else needs to be done uh, how are you working uh, with uh, you know these uh, content creators and influencers on this department and what is the way forward how do you look at it so i think a uh, extremely extremely important point and and ex- very relevant as this 
greater economy and ecosystem grows hmm. and as it starts to have a substantial impact on the overall marketing and communication ecosystem. One report says that by 2030, it'll take around 10 to 20% of the overall digital advertising budget, hmm. which will be in tens of billions, right? So if something which grows to that extent needs to be looked at in the way that it's harnessing it in the rightful manner. Hmm. What we do, a couple of things. What is first on what is on platform, in app, that we are enabling creators to come and disclose any such relationship which has an economic or other barter kind of a, uh, sure. exchange happening. So we a, have that ability and we promote that ability as an available for a creator mm -hmm. to do it. That's an enablement from a feature point of view. Then there comes an education point of mm -hmm. view. We today run which arguably would be the world's largest creator education enablement program called Born on Instagram. There are half a million people who are in the journey of being a creator or in different phases of their journey who are registered. Mm. It is in seven different languages mm. and anyone can become a part of it. Mm. That's a way and through that program we educate them. Sure. What are the best practices that if you are endorsing a brand, how do you need to declare things, what to do that thing. Mm. Third thing that we do, we work very closely with Advertising Senate Council of India. Mm. We are part of their task force where we are hearing from the creators, what are the issues or concerns they have, what are the things that they require as well as communicating to them what is the government requirements and what the government is thinking. Uh, moving on, uh, let's speak about Instagram algorithms. Now, mm -hmm. everyone has mm -hmm. an opinion. What is it? 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 I don't know. I have mixed opinion on okay. it. But I want to understand what is the biggest misconception that you have addressed around uh, Instagram al algorithms? Uh, see, I think the misconception is never a point of time misconception. It's, it's always uh, always on something else because what they feel. There is this thing that, okay, only those creators who have large following would get their content be seen. Mm -hmm. That's a misconception because we have creators like uh, Dipinder Singh Nani from uh, Nanpur in Madhya Pradesh breaking out. Mm -hmm. He doesn't, he didn't have that many number of followers yeah. or Ronat Neel from Teliamura in Tripura who's a village fashion designer breaking out, he wouldn't have otherwise broken out if the content was only promoting the big creators or the more established mm -hmm. creators. So the misconceptions are a moving piece. Third thing is that which is about uh, uh, the nature of content, which is like the genre of content. Yeah. There's a misconception that, okay, is there only a particular genre? Is there music and dance or entertainment content is more seen? If you look at from a supply point of view, it's but natural mm -hmm. that more supply would come in. But is that what is goes there? No. Because the biggest thing about Instagram algorithm is that it's personalized. Mm -hmm. I think that is the fact which is what needs to be told and needs to be understood in many creators who are successful, they get it. Because my feed is based on what I like, your feed is based on what you like or what we think you would like based on your experience and how you're sharing content, who you're following and other things. And that takes care of any kind of a bias mm -hmm. at a collective level because it's built for you. Every field is built for. There is no other product in the world which is built for individual. Yeah. So therefore, there cannot be any such kind of a way which through which it can be controlled. Fabulous. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining us today and sharing these insights. Thank you very much. With that, it's a wrap on Storyboard this week. You can catch all of our content on Facebook, Twitter and YouTube. Thanks for watching. We will be back same time next week. See you soon.